The divine text says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Revelation chapter number 20 verse 14. The scripture says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now what I just read to you is the first mention and the last mention of hell in the Bible. It's mentioned 54 times, 54 verses, have the word H-E-L-L. -L. Now there are other references to hell that don't use the word hell, but uh, pit and so forth. But the word hell itself tonight is found 54 times in the Holy Bible. But when you come to the New Testament, especially to the preaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, nobody that ever lived on the face of this earth preached more on hell than he did. And he defined it in terms that are unmistakable. There is no way that you can mistake what he means when he mentions hell. In Matthew chapter number 5 and verse number 22, he said, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the counsel. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Now there's no way that you can make that the grave. No way. Hell fire is literally talking about a place of burning. In Matthew chapter number 5 and verse 29 in the same context he said this, If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. There's no way that that can be mistaken as the grave. Well, I thought you buried the body. You buried the physical body. But the soul is shaped like the body. You have a soulish body. And that's what goes to hell. The Bible said, come and touch this tongue, for I am tormented at these flames. Luke chapter number 16. You see what I mean? The soulish body. And that's what was in hell. In the book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, the Bible said, And fear not them which kill the body, the physical body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. But what you do find is time and time and time again, when the Lord Jesus Christ preached, he quoted the Old Testament many times. He used parables. Luke 16 is not a parable, but he gave a message to the people and made it plain. I mean, nobody could ever speak any plainer than he did. This is plain talk. You can't mistake what he's saying in Matthew chapter number 10. There's no mistaking it. There's no mistaking it. Let me read it for you again. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. There's only one that can do that. A man can only kill your body. He cannot touch your soul and spirit. He doesn't have that power. He doesn't have that authority, but God does. God does. The parallel passage to that is found in Luke 12, chapter number 12. He said, I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. And so he said that he's going to turn him into hell. The word Gehenna in the New Testament comes from the valley of Hema. There's three words in the New Testament that are important as it relates to hell. Hades, Gehenna, and Tartarus. The Apostle Peter talks about Tartarus, and here's what he says. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment. The Apostle Peter said that, and he used the word Tartarus. He didn't create coin a, coin a phrase. It was well known. What is Tartarus? Tartarus is the lowest hell. It's the lowest hell. Gehenna is a reference to hell itself. Hades is a reference to the unseen state of the dead. Whether they're burning in hell or whether they're in Abraham's bosom. See what I mean? Hades and Sheol refer to the same place. And so don't ever, ever let anybody come along and say to you, well, Sheol simply means the grave. So the New Testament uses three words. 
translated as hell, Hades, unseen state of the dead, Gehenna, that's the pit, that's hell, hell fire. That's not the unseen state of the dead. Anytime the word Gehenna shows up in the New Testament, that's what it's talking about. But it's a reference, but it, it, but it points to the Valley of Hinnom, which is a picture of what's going on. The Valley of Hinnom was the Valley of Tophet in the Old Testament. The place where they offered human sacrifice, put their babies in the arms of Molech, and listened to them scream as they rolled off into that iron belly and burned in the flames. And the perpetual burning of the trash heap and the fire and the stench and the maggots and everything associated with it was to all who looked upon it a place of torment and that's what hell looks like but that's not hell see it's only symbolic of it so uh, you have Hades Gehenna or Hena or Hena or Gehenna and Tartarus these are the three words translated hell in the New Testament so you know when you look at it you, you say to yourself well there's a lot in there about that isn't there yes there is you know why God didn't want you to go to hell he doesn't want you to go to hell. I think we belittle and take away from that horrible sacrifice that our Lord made at the cross if we don't understand that the unsaved soul goes to hell. He endured horrible torment to keep you out of the pit, keep you from hell. So it's a serious thing, isn't it?